We're continuing in this series on who is Jesus Christ. In our first video, we talked about who Jesus is. In the next videos, we want to talk more about what Jesus is actually doing today. Remember we read from Hebrews chapter 10, and that famous saying that says Jesus sat down at the right hand of God. I think it's a great visual. A son who successfully finished the mission that his father had given him, and he goes to be with his father for eternity. No, no, no. It's not like Jesus is just sitting there doing nothing, waiting to return to the earth. Jesus is busy. How do I know this? Because he isn't done with me yet. One of Jesus' main roles today is to develop his followers into the kind of people that God is looking for. Jesus wants to transform our characters into godly people. Even though Jesus is with his Father in heaven, he also abides within every person who has accepted him through baptism. And I love the way that Paul explains this to the Galatians. He says in Galatians 2, verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. When we are baptized and put on the name of Christ, we invite him into our lives, into our hearts, into our minds. And Christ now lives within us. And our lives are changed. We no longer live for ourselves. We live for Christ. The life I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God. That faith in Jesus Christ is what changes us, what stretches us and forms us and causes us to grow. That's what Paul is trying to explain to us in Romans. When we take on Christ, we are no longer people who are concerned just for the flesh. We are now people whose main concern is our spiritual lives. Look at the verse we talked about in the last video from Romans chapter 8, verse 9. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, he says in verse 10, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If Christ is in you, then sin won't matter any longer. Your body is dead to sin. You become alive to righteousness. What the Bible tells us is that Jesus Christ's life will be in us only as we seek to make his way of life our way of life. We have to want to walk as he walked, to live as he lived. The Bible also calls this putting off the old man and putting on the new man. Look at Ephesians chapter 4, starting in verse 22. He says, Put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and is corrupt through deceitful desires. And be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. God wants us to be conformed to the image of his son. Paul continues the same theme in in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. He says, we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. And verse 29, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. So what's our role in all of this? What does God want from us? This doesn't just happen to us. We have to be a part of it. What God wants from us is the the want to. You see, it's a two-sided concept. Yes, we can't do it ourselves. We have to have faith that Christ is going to work within us to change us. But we have to want to seek to have Christ's life in us, in order for him to give us the help that we need to achieve that goal. That's what God wants from us. 
the desire to change, that 100% of your heart to change. That's what we bring to the table. This relationship with Jesus is often described as Jesus' priesthood. And the letter to Hebrews in particular makes this clear. Let's read from Hebrews 7 as Paul shows how much better Jesus' priesthood is than any other human priesthood. He says in Hebrews 7, verses 22 to 25, This makes Jesus the guarantor of a better covenant. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he's able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God. Through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Before he was made immortal and went to be at the right hand of God, Jesus was mortal. He understood sin. He understood temptation. He understood how hard our lives can be. I love how Paul explains this in Hebrews chapter 2, starting at verse 14. Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. For surely it is not the angels that he helps, but he helps the offspring of Abraham. Therefore he had to be made like to his brothers in every respect so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. In verse 18, for because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. That is the kind of helper that we have today, right now. When we talk about bringing Jesus Christ into your heart in order to change your life, that is what we're talking about. A person who knows us. Jesus knows us, and he knows what we're going through. Look what Paul says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness. It's a double negative, right? We do have a high priest who is able to sympathize with our weakness. One who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Jesus is uniquely qualified to be our Savior. Jesus knows what you're going through, and Jesus knows how to help. Jesus wants you to turn your life over to Him so that He can help you. You can't do it on your own. Jesus is there to help you. All you have to do is want to. 